Hello, everybody. Welcome to RDA Tech Q&A. You've got questions. We've got guesses. Um, we're doing a special one tonight. Hope you will enjoy it. With me, as always, my producer, Mike Gearman, long and storied history of tech repair and such. I am Nash. I've been doing Radio Dead Air for ever, and I also have worked for a long time in tech. And joining us this week for our little special edition is uh, Pushing Up Roses. You may know her from YouTubes. She is a retro gamer and also a adventure gamer and also various and other sundry sorts of gaming stuff. And she's going to be joining us tonight and we're going to be talking about retro games and stuff. Woohoo! That's her. I'm excited. That's this is my her. jam. Her jam, indeed. Oh, oh now it... I'm fearing that somebody's going to ask me this like impossible question and I'm going to be like, oh my God. You will, be know. you will be shamed in front of my... <laughs> tens of dozens of people. <laughs> my whole channel just shuts down and I'm called like a fraud. Unclean. Well, retro gaming is far more your wheelhouse, Roses, than mine. My my, my experience with retro gaming is, did Steam release it? Okay, <laughs> I, I can do it. If it, it. Is it on good old games? Fine. I, I've never built a PC for retro gaming. I rebuilt PCs for work that have to do old stuff. So mm -hmm. it's similar, I'm assuming. I mean, I'm I'm all about emulation, man. Like in terms of retro gaming, emulation's my favorite way to go. I love GOG. When GOG started in like 2008, I was stoked uh, because even though I have hardware that I can run, I have specifically hardware to run those very difficult games like Windows 98 and higher. Uh, I do have hardware for that. But any time I can emulate a game through a virtual machine or a DOS box, I'm definitely pro all of that. And that actually answers uh, the question. It wasn't on Nash's list. It was a question I was going to ask. Oh. Which did you prefer, old school, you know, hardware machine or emulation? I, oh, my goodness. People are going to get angry at me. Every time I talk about emulation, people are like, ew, oh, no. I prefer emulation a lot of the time uh, because it's faster it works better. Um, I, whenever I play my old uh, Windows 98 machine, I think I think we're just spoiled at this point. I play, I boot up my 98 machine. It's taken forever, even when it's running at its best. Uh, so I still prefer, you know, emulation. I prefer certain kinds of emulation um, for certain games. Like uh, I'll do Scum VM for certain games. I'll do DOSBox for other games. And then when I can't get something running, I'll do a virtual machine. Before we get too much deeper into things, I want to remind everybody, if you have questions for us tonight, if uh, you want to talk retro gaming with us, or if you have other tech questions, we might be able to squeeze those in. Uh, you can send those to requests at radiodeadair.com. We will do our best to facilitate these. Uh, we already have a bunch waiting, so we're going to get those soon. Um, now, well, while we're on the subject, uh, what in terms of... Are, are there certain games where just emulation isn't an option yes <laughs> there there are certain games where this is not gonna where no matter how hard you try there's gonna be problems and those games kind of fall in the uh what i found in personal experience they fall anywhere from sometimes windows 95 and up but mostly in this very specific span of time from windows 98 to around 2004 to 2005 uh, those games are extremely difficult to emulate no matter what virtual machine you have. And I specifically have a Windows 98 machine for those games. And those are the games that you find at like savers or half price books. You know how you see all of those like hidden object games and CSI and all those <laughs> God, weird I games? Those. Yes. Yeah. Those are the games, man. Those are those late 90s, early 2000 games that maybe might run on your modern machine if they were programmed well. Um, I actually got, I bought a game just for Let's Play's sake years ago called, How, it was the house game, as in the house show, the doctor house. They had a game for that. And it was it was old, it was early 2000s. It ran on Windows 10. Somebody programmed it really well and it ran. But most of the time in that time span, uh, it's just a hassle and you may as well try to find some kind of like older machine to run it on now is there a common so, denominator between those games is it like some sort of uh plug-in or direct x or quick time or is just uh 
something about Windows 98 and beyond? I think it's I think it's just something with Windows 98 and beyond. I don't know what the what the trend is here because like I said sometimes I can run it uh and sometimes I can't. Uh might be the quality of the game, but that doesn't quite explain House MD as a game. That quality was terrible and it <laughs> ran um so it's a crapshoot sometimes. Uh, another kind of difficult to run kind of game is Windows 3.1. I've had very strange difficulties running 3.1 games. Uh, and I got around that because I don't have a machine with Windows 3.1. I have a 98 machine. Got around that by installing Windows 3.1 in DOSBox. And that's how I got around that. Well, let's let's break this down a little bit for people who are just getting started for, for neophytes and whatnot. Let, let's 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 talk about emulation and how to get underway with it. Um, let's start yes. with DOSBox. With DOSBox. Yes. <laughs> that was an opening. Any... It's an oh, opening. There's a... oh, okay. Yes. That's my cue. Okay. Yes. Uh, oh, I love talking about DOSBox, like so intensely. So, uh, for a long, for a while before DOSBox uh, kind of came into the picture, I couldn't run like any of my games. I almost kind of gave up on PC gaming at one time years ago. And when DOSBox kind of came into the picture, uh, I found that I could run anything I want. Um, and so that is a great starting place. Uh, now, obviously, you can't run Windows games in DOSBox unless they're under 3.1. Uh, but for any kind of DOS game, DOSBox is going to be amazing. You can download it easily at their website over at DOSBox. And it's just extremely accessible. And I'm all about accessibility. I know it's easy for, quote, hardcore gamers to tell people just to just to buy a rig and build a rig. But that's not everyone's that's not going to work for everyone, you know. Uh, so I'm so about accessibility and DOSBox makes it, ex you know, accessible. Uh, the only problem with DOSBox is that there's a little bit of learning you have to do. Uh, you do have to try to learn the command lines. They're not bad. Um, I used to have a tutorial actually on DOSBox on my YouTube channel, and uh, now are these I don't like, know what happened. Are yet. you talking DOS line commands or commands specific for DOSBox? Uh, they're they are they are specific to DOSBox, but they're similar to the the commands that you would actually use in DOS. So if you've used DOS before, these commands are not going to be you know they're not going to be surprising to you. You'll pick them up, um, but there are tutorials about everything forever on YouTube that can teach you, you know, how to do DOSBox. And if DOSBox is not your jam, if you just don't like using command for anything, there's Scum, uh, Scum VM, which has compatibility with a lot of DOS games. So either, and that has a UI that actually has a point and click UI that people seem to uh, understand a little bit more. All right, so when you actually have to break, you say you've, you've got your own Windows 98 machine. Yeah. Um, what did the pro did, was this done for you, or did you have to go through the process of finding and resurrecting one from the olden days? I actually got extremely, extremely lucky with my machine. I was at Savers one day, and there was a cardboard box on the floor, and it had specs on it. I'm like, is this just a computer just like sitting here on the floor? And I look at it and it's just a full in-box compact uh, Presario, which were top of the line uh, at the time, by the way. Wow. They're not anymore. But yeah, just complete in-box. I feel, And I, I ran it and it looked like nobody had touched it. It just looked pristine. And I'm thinking like, did some old people back in the 90s buy this just to like have a computer and they never used it? Uh, we opened it up. There was no dust in it. It was completely just, it worked perfectly. Um, they were, they were savvy enough to clean it out. There were, there was nothing weird, like on the computer. They were savvy <laughs> enough to do that. Old uh, people porn! <laughs> I looked. I was like, oh, it's in the pictures. Are there anything in the pictures? But yeah, they cleaned it out. It was clear. And, uh, yeah, it was just in perfect condition. And that's, I guess that's the power of thrifting. But even thrifting, man, that's an incredible find. Uh, I paid $15 for it. Nice. And... That's yeah, and it just it runs perfectly. I didn't actually have to do anything to the computer uh, to get it working. So, we're yeah. When it comes to there are certain like eras of older machines that are 
the value level fluctuates wildly between them. Right now, the Windows 98 era, those are still so common, mm. less so as time goes on, but they're still fairly common enough that you can find them in the wild for relatively nothing because no one thinks yeah. they're worth anything. But if you go back a little bit like to the, the late uh, Windows 3.1 era, all the way back to early DOS, the prices on those have slowly risen because those are not only are there not as many in work condition like uh we talked about what was it was it last week we were talking about the older hard drives mike yeah last week week before yeah the older th older uh dos hard drives windows 3.1 that era of hard drives before uh ide that was that's a period of time where hard drives are becoming less and less available because they're just worn out or old so getting a hold of one of those is kind of a special it, it's getting more expensive but windows 98 and that era still a pretty pretty nice sweet spot right there for finding stuff that uh people don't consider valuable but yeah i think that has to do with the collection aspect of it and you know there are collectors out there who collect anything and everything mm -hmm. you know including 98 and and you know newer than that but in terms of collecting, people want that older, those older machines. Uh, I was lucky enough to have an IBM 5150. And uh, when I got it, I don't think it was as pricey as it is now. And it seems like such a collectible now. Uh, I also, uh, my friend Lazy Game Reviews, he gave me a Tandy that he found nice. uh, just on eBay. Tandy 1000 was my first computer. And, he, and those are considered collectibles now. And so they are they are way more expensive. I paid 15 for this 98 machine, but they those older things can go up to $500,000 depending, you know, on what you're looking for. Yeah, my parents got our first computer was a Trash 80. And I'm <gasps> convinced that if I go and when I visit them again, if I go into the basement, it's still there somewhere. Sell that. Sell it. <laughs> TRS 80. Oh my god, you're getting money for that, man. Um what are you, Grady, stop. <laughs> He's in the background sharpening his claws. Could you not? <laughs> he has to let everyone know that he's a threat. <sighs> These claws are a threat. What, one of the, the nice things about the, uh, at least if, if you absolutely have to get a machine to do emulation with, one of the nicer things about that, uh, the... Pentium and 46 and 386 era is that things weren't as diversified hardware wise. Um, today you have like a bajillion different options for video cards, uh, processors, two different manufacturers. Sometimes the shit's not compatible, but with that era around the 46 and the early Pentium stuff, there really wasn't much drift between them. I mean, th there wasn't, in terms of video cards, it was pretty much everybody was about on the same playing field. Most of your most of your customization at that point was, I've got a different keyboard or a different mouse. Mm -hmm. And that was, that seemed to be about it. So the, trying to, to find something from that era is a little bit easier, especially to get it, compatible with whatever game you're trying to run because there wasn't a broad spectrum of 3d video 3d graphics were in its infancy and i mean we're talking this was the era of starcraft i mean of star fox so um 3d ray traced all that stuff it, it they weren't really making workhorse graphics cards quite yet they started to we, we started to inch into that uh the late 90s early 2000s Voodoo, 3D effects, all those sort of things. And that can end up being a hitch in trying to play a game with uh, with old hardware as opposed to emulation, which is another mm -hmm. point in emulation's favor because those graphics cards are ridiculously easy to pretend like. Um, but in, so in general, you're you're more geared toward using software fixes to get around the need for tons of old hardware. Mm -hmm. 
or you know or if at all possible uh just finding them on gog honestly because they do a really really decent job at getting some of those games to run uh depending on what system you're using now some of them have issues and that's Mm. where you got to go to the forums and be like hey how did you get around this but i would say like 99 percent of the time you know i've got a game that runs you know really really well through gog well i've i've myself i found it's kind of it's been back and forth and like how many different fallout is a good uh example how many different editions have they put out of that to run with older ones uh, I remember a long while back they offered Fallout 1 for free that you could download and it's like, oh great, I, I'll play this. And my machine was like, what is this? We're not doing this. <laughs> I, I don't, what do you think you're doing? How dare you? There's there, I, When I was looking up uh, DOSBox just a moment ago, there's actually a section on their tutorials about, hey, here's how you get Fallout 1 running. Yeah. Fallout 1, what year was that? Because I'm not a Fallout person. 90, Sorry. Sorry, Fallout fans. Was it 98, 96, Ugh. 98? Yeah. 97. 97, yeah. I knew it was okay. somewhere around there. Yeah, that, that was... That was... Sometimes it will behave. Sometimes it doesn't like aspect ratios. I think they've refined it in the time since I first gave it a shot. It was a few years ago, which... That's mm-hmm. another thing to keep in mind. If you've tried to play a retro game a few years ago and you pulled your hair out, things have improved because retro yeah. gaming has expanded considerably. And people have gone back and they focus time on getting specific old games to work with new shit. Yeah, so I... there's a, an abundance of information out there. On You know, I go to Vogons. Uh, the forums whenever I'm having an issue or just any, or even the GOG forums, you know, the moderators and people will come in and, and say something. So there's always somewhere you can go to try to find a fix. And I, I find usually I do try to, or I do find a fix for some of those things. So I, I had a thought on on why some of the games from the 98 to, what you said, 2004? About that, yeah. yeah. About, about. Uh, don't Don't work so well. And in that period, uh, Microsoft, when they were changing from, you know, Windows 98 to Windows XP and then ME and whatever else was in there. ME was before XP. ME was the mistake edition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, They depreciated a lot of code and they changed a lot of functions around. So it it might well be that it's just trying to call code that's not there anymore. Yeah. Microsoft has a tendency to do that sort of stuff. They will... What is this? Get rid of it. Who does it affect? Hardly anybody. Okay, fuck it. It's gone. Well, in a lot of cases, it was to get rid of bugs. Well, that too. Um. All right. Well, now we've got a you know, little we'll set the pace here. Let's let's start trying to answer some of these questions. Uh, we'll start with Xterra. And if you guys have questions, you can fire them off to requests at radiodeadair.com. We'll see if we can add them along. Uh, Xterra writes, Nash, Mike, Roses, and other assorted entities in the know. I'm an avid retro gamer who prefers a modern environment to play classic games in, using emulators and likes, just DOSBox for the old stuff, breaking out DG Voodoo for the Star Wars Racer, NFS3 stuff, you know, late 90s 3D titles that are an absolute pain in the nads to get working right. However, there are some 90s and early 2000 games that just won't run on Windows 7 SP1 Pro, no matter what uh, or what compat-, compat mode fuckery I pulled. Uh, they generally don't require 3D rendering, so I've been running them on uh, Windows 98 SE Virtual Machine. One to solicit, solicit opinions. In y'all's view, what would be the best VM software to run an emulated 98 SE gaming rig? Uh, for host machine specs, my laptop's got a Gen 3 i7, uh, 16 gig of RAM, and an AMD uh, Radeon HD 7670. Um, thanks, Xterra. Now, that, that is one thing we... we we didn't cover yet and that's virtual machines Mm -hmm. um and i just my own little experiences here um sarah my girlfriend who lives here um was trying to get an old game running called obsidian oh that's an obscure one yeah our first attempt she she tried to use docs dos box as a first attempt and 
the mouse was a jittery mess. So for a second attempt, we fired up a virtual machine. I, what were you using? Uh, not Oracle's virtual machine. What's the free one? It might have been uh, one from Oracle. VMware. VMware. Yeah, we, we fired up VMware and we did a Windows 98 fresh installation on VMware. And in that case, it started, it worked much better, but the sound was a disaster. So what we had to do was we had to track down a driver, a specific type of driver to change the, the, the virtual sound card to run a different virtual driver and then because the one that came included with vmware did not support midi which that's uh. yeah that's that, that that's a hiccup i found um honestly do, do you have a preference when it comes to a virtual machine i used to use what did i i used to use virtual pc uh 2007. uh sadly that's not going to run on i you know i have windows 10 now so that's not going to actually be viable mm -hmm. for a lot of people uh but that does run on uh, i think that runs on windows 7 if you're still using that so i used to like that now i'm just running vmware um it's been running better uh lately i don't know why uh they're constantly working on that kind of stuff so it has been running okay the problem is, I find that each game is kind of individual. Like you said, you had to go through different things. You got it running, but then the sound is a mess. Or sometimes, even in the VM, the mouse can be a mess, or there's jittering, or, or something like that. Uh, so I can say, you know, use a Windows 98 machine to do that. Um, I found some success, a little bit of success, with trying Windows 2000 for some of the games. Or... Even XP, honestly, I haven't, you know, XP for that. Some success. Yeah, it, for those who aren't familiar, Windows 2000 was an edition of Windows that was kind of an intermediary step between the 98 era and the XP era. It was mainly run by businesses. Um, mm -hmm. it, and it was based off the uh, NT core. Right, right. It was based off Windows NT, which was fully business. And Windows 2000 was trying an attempt to meld the two. It didn't exactly work, but it had more features than Windows 98 or definitely more than Windows Millennium Edition. The only trouble was game support was hit or miss. Sometimes it could handle games just fine, just like if you were running them on Windows 98. And sometimes it just couldn't do it at all. So it's it's another, you know, tool in the toolbox, pretty much trying to get some of these older things to work properly. Yeah, it's it's kind of a crapshoot sometimes. You know, if I'm finding if I'm finding my Windows 95 doesn't work in VM, I'll boot, I'll bump it up to 98. If that's not working, I'll bump that up to 2000 or I'll try XP. It's just kind of trial and error depending on the game and and what the problem is, you know, with the game. You know, for you it was a sound problem with Obsidian uh but there's all there's just so many problems with so many solutions. It's it's difficult to come up with like the ultimate solution that's just going to work a hundred percent, you know, every single time. Well, um, let's do one that's a little bit more specific for you. This is uh, from Amy. She writes, "May this missive find you all well and hi, Grady, you lovable ball of nonsense." I'm sure he doesn't care. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have several of the old Clue Finder series, but can't play them on my Windows 8.1 machine, nor can I load them on my poor old 10-year-old Windows 7 laptop. Is there any way to play these old things again? I really miss how ridiculous they were. I have the Egypt one, the one they, they get stranded <laughs> on a weird island, one where the plants are somehow evil. Never finished that one. Uh, what do you think? Well, first of all, those games sound amazing. If I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, they were kind of a... Uh... They were kind of competing with maybe Carmen San Diego, I think, at the time. I want to say that sounds slightly familiar. I'm going to look this up because I'm on the Google. So I need to see what this is before I can give them, uh, you know. Let's see. Okay. Oh, okay. So, okay. The Clue Finders games came out in 98. Uh, my first instinct was to say uh, DOSBox, of course. But... It looks like these games have to be either run on the original hardware or possibly VMware 
with Windows 98 installed on it. I was this is the learning company. I didn't know that. Uh, so this is the later learning company games after Treasure Mountain and Treasure Math Storm and Gizmos and Gadgets. Uh, this is when uh, what's his face owned the company, Kevin from Shark Tank. What the hell's his name? Kevin O'Leary. <laughs> I know you way just, too much about this. You just did a video on on the learning company, didn't you? I I didn't. It wasn't the learning company. It was actually EA Kids. Oh, sorry, EA Kids. Yeah, and so I did talk about the learning company in that video since it was all edutainment. But yeah, e, I, if nobody knows this, EA had a very short stint of edutainment games from ninety three to ninety five called EA Kids. Nice. Which you can run on DOSBox, by the way. But yeah, for these Clue Finders games, it, it might be a little more involved because it is Windows 98. That's that weird time when certain games won't run. I would try, because VMware is free, I would try VMware first with, a, with Windows 98. And I would think, I mean, Learning Company, they're a pretty good company. I would think that their games are programmed well, and I would hope it would work. Otherwise, you know, old hardware, which I know is not... A solution for everyone yeah it's it with, with these sort of things you kind of have to try everything because yeah while some of us have we want to play the older stuff even though you know it's very outdated microsoft just rushes along forward ever forward and that means they're depreciating code that means they're changing stuff like direct x and um Oof, remember what quick time was a requirement for damn near everything? Yes. It's like, wh why does this game need quick time? Why the <laughs> hell does it, this is, this is a, this is a Tetris clone. Why does a Tetris clone need quick time? <laughs> um, th that, that was one of those, and that's, that's the other things you might have to do. You might have to, in addition to getting a copy of Windows 98, which is one of the hitches. When VMware, yeah. we, we talk about the virtual machines and you download VMware. That's not going to give you a copy of Windows um, built in. That legally, they can't do right. that. Right. Um, what VMware actually is, is it's, it's just like if you had a version of the computer. It's a blank computer. You have to install the software yourself. So you'll have to find a reliable means of getting a copy of Windows 98. Legally, you should get a key for Windows 98. Yep, yep. If that's, you're going to what I did. run <laughs> Windows, you legally should have a key for it. Um, but uh, and also you have to track down stuff like older editions of QuickTime, um, was 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 uh, oh, Macromedia. What the? Fuck they got? It's not Flash. It's the other one. Oh, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's um. Yes, you see, same as same as me. I'm trying to remember the Shockwave. Yes, it's oh Shockwave. Some games, <laughs> some games need stuff like Shockwave, depending on what you, uh, on what you do. Um, th there, there are different plugin requirements. Sometimes the game comes included with them because they were smart enough to think ahead. So if you have the CD, you could put that in, and when it installs on your virtual machine, it will install the proper stuff. Sometimes they don't. You have to get a copy yourself. So you have to track those down. Um, but often, yeah, the cheapest first jumping off point is to get a virtual machine going and install Windows yeah. on it. I just, I went through desperately searching to see if the Clue Finders games were on Steam or just anywhere, and they're not. Because part of me dies when someone's like, I can't run my Windows 98 games, and I'm like, no, <laughs> please release them somewhere, anywhere. Well, it tends to be a matter of uh, how popular the game is, whether yeah. there's a lot of work on it. And some games, people, like uh, we were talking about Obsidian early, people really love these little games, but not enough people uh, love them or know about them to have a bunch of people working on the code to make them viable anymore. Yeah, and uh, with a lot of the learning company stuff, um, 
Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, uh, they own the learning company now after it went through terrible mergers and acquisitions. I mean, it was it was a mess. It was one of the worst in history, this merger. And so it's it seems that Houghton Mifflin Harcourt don't have any interest in those learning games. Their interest lies in games that are still popular right now, which is Carmen San Diego and the Oregon Trail. Those are the games you can still see they sell products for. They don't care about any of these other games. They're not in the public eye. How but Carmen... That, how is it that Oregon Trail... I, I, <laughs> I played that shit in, in elementary school. I died in Oregon Trail repeatedly. Everyone dies. Everyone dies. Everyone gets dysentery. Everyone poops themselves to death. Oh, God. Inevitably. That's the... Yeah, I have a, I have Oregon Trail on my Tandy 1000. I'm like, I'm going to play this. This will be fun and nostalgic. No, it wasn't fun. It wasn't nostalgic. I just died in a like lot. 20 minutes. But we loved it because it was like it, it was like an actual video game you could play and they let you play it in school. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right. Show of hands. Who spent their most time on the section where you, you went hunting? Oh, my God. I hunted so much. I didn't even need the food. It was just, <laughs> oh, it, now I can play the shooting part of the game. <laughs> I would shoot like five bears on the screen and then I can't carry it back because you can, and I'm like, oh, what? I can't carry a thousand pounds for the food back? This is a video game. I can do whatever I want. I felt it was a very bad message for kids. It was just like, you know, you can <laughs> kill all these animals. There are no consequences. <laughs> Well, that is historically accurate as to what they thought. I, I, okay, yeah, that's the point. That's true. Um, but uh, if the the um VM route doesn't work for you, go thrifting. Go to a yeah. uh, um a Goodwill. Uh, Habitat for Humanity has a store called Restore. That's another good option. Salvation Army, any other thrift stores in your area, um, you will possibly find old computers uh, that are everyone would otherwise consider junk, but yeah. they'll run Windows ninety eight. They'll uh, they'll run it acceptably well, and you, it, you could play the games natively on these old systems. Yeah, yeah. and eBay is always an option. Yeah, yeah. You just have to be diligent with it. You know, don't get discouraged if one day all you're seeing are are bad deals and overpriced things because you yeah. will come across something and same with thrifting you have to be kind of diligent with it uh and i would advise if you're going to try ebay always make sure that the seller will accept returns yes and has, and, and, and has a good rating yeah because we, with stuff like this with this type of type of hardware you could easily get into a situation where they say, uh, no refunds, and you bought, they, they knowingly sold you a piece of junk that doesn't work. And, you know, so you have to be aware of that sort of stuff. Um, let's see what else we have here. Oh, here's a quick one for you, Roses. Uh, Rock Warrior Wolf writes, what's your favorite N64 game, if you have one? Also, what's your favorite retro gaming console? No computers. <laughs> I do. I do have a favorite N64 game. I actually love the N64. Uh, it was the first console I bought with my own money that I got from selling my Sega Genesis, uh, which was a regret. Uh, my favorite game is probably Banjo-Kazooie. can play it over and over again. Love that game. I play it to completion. Uh, and probably second to that is, uh, is uh, Ocarina of Time. And my favorite retro gaming console is probably between the Sega Genesis and the N64. I just, I wanted those consoles the most, you know, when I was young. Yeah, see, I, the Genesis, it was, it, when I was younger, you had like two different kinds of households. You had either a household had an NES or they had a Genesis. And whichever one you didn't have, that was the one you wanted the most. <laughs> it's true. Because I yeah. had the NES and then I saw like uh, Golden Beast ads and other games, oh. other like Moonwalker. And I'm like, Mine doesn't do that. I want to do that. Yeah, I saw a, an ad for Sonic the Hedgehog, and I'm like, that's what I need. This is the thing I need. I need Sonic the Hedgehog, so I need this Genesis. We, we just had an Atari for the longest time, and then finally got a Nintendo. <sighs> it's tragic. 
Well, there were three of us. My parents are going like, we're not going to get you, th- you three of you uh, another thing to keep you indoors all day. Just go outside. And and now now just out of the blue, I was we're we're cleaning out the house. I was digging through one of the old storage buildings. We found an N sixty four and a ton of games. Only he, here's the just screwy thing. I never owned one. Oh. <laughs> My dad never was, owned one. What is this? Where did this I'm, damn thing come from? I, I'm it's still con- now. I'm still convinced you accidentally packed a roommate's box and they just never called you on it. Well, it's just... <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Well, I plugged it in. It works. Well, okay. What, we've got a copy of Zelda and it's working, but uh, I'll, I think some of the others, I think the uh, cartridge slot might need to be cleaned. Yes, I did blow on it. I did. I blew there all the cartridges. There is someone out there, Nash, missing an N64. And they're like, man, when I was young, I had an N64 and I don't know where it went. If they're missing it that bad, they could have called my ass. I have the same phone. <laughs> I've had the same phone number for almost 20 years. Impressive. Um, let's see. There was another one here. All right. Uh, uh, this one isn't exactly retro gaming related, but it is something that, that you have to probably have had to do a couple times. And that is get footage off a device that is not equipped for the HDMI era. Um, John, uh, writes, I am John. I've been a fan for a long time. I was wondering if you have any suggestions for the following. What would be good recording equipment that can convert VHS to digital? So if a ton of them, you like to burn a few on DVD or use the content in videos before time degrades them too much. Anything you suggest, ranging from cheap but effective to best. On the same note, I still have an old school Nintendo NES, a PS2, a few PS1 games, and an Xbox 360. What equipment or programs would you suggest that allow me to play those on my computer so I can record? Recording program, my Windows 10 laptop works well enough for most recordings from VLC to even interwebs, but I would like to get some of the material off my older stuff as well. Any suggestions? Well, for VHS to digital, I would just uh, pawn that shit off on someone else and have them <laughs> do it or like pray. Uh, I've been using Pinnacle. I have a Pinnacle uh, device. It works okay, but I'm open to suggestion for more stuff because I hate I absolutely hate working with VHS. Uh, ugh, I hate it. It's an, I'm getting like flashbacks. I hate it. It's just a nightmare for me. Um, and obviously, there, you're going to need a VCR to do that if you're doing the Pinnacle stuff. There, there is a uh, composite to USB device that supposedly will let you get video and sound off of uh, VHS. I've never used one. Um, it's thirty something dollars on Amazon. Just search for composite to uh, USB, and I, I can make no guarantees. Hello, train. No. Hello, train. I can make no guarantees on its effectiveness or how well it works, um, but it's there. Yeah, I've I've come to at least we're lucky enough in that uh, we're talking composite. We're talking at most six forty by four eighty, or are we talking even down lower, three twenty by? 240 uh that's a good question because that was the old i i'm trying to, to remember the upper limits of a regular old television set before vga i'd like to wasn't it 640 uh typically 480i or 576i so that yeah that'd be 640 by 480 interlaced um so those those type of devices have an easier time being a usb connection because there's not nearly as much information being broadcast, which means you need a less of bandwidth to get it from your device onto your computer. Um, Helping Age makes devices like that. I'm, I'm probably saying that completely wrong. Hopping, uh, hop, happen, hopping, gadge. Go yeah, to- the one I'm looking at is, is by by StarTech. Uh, StarTech's kind really- of a generic one. Um, Pretty much what, what the main thing you need is to have some sort of composite input to your computer. Most recording programs will be able to handle that. Uh, Pinnacle, like Rose has mentioned, also stuff like uh, Vegas is a good one. 
relatively inexpensive. In fact, they've been offering uh, copies of that for uh, the Humble Bundle for a while now. I A video editor is kind of an easier way to record that stuff, although you can find some free options. Um, even if, sometimes if you're lucky, if you find a good device that's fully compatible with, with modern Windows, you can run it through something like OBS, and then OBS will recognize it as a capture device, and you'll be able to just record it live. It won't be like pulling it straight off the tape. You'll have to sit there, push play, sit through the whole thing while it's up on getting captured up on screen, and it'll record it as a file. And the same thing goes for your uh, your game consoles as well. OBS is probably one of the easiest ways to record if if so long as you have a capture device capable of doing it. Um, and oh, is OBS freeware? Yeah, OBS is free. Yeah. Okay. The the only problem with o, and I use OBS all the time um, for different games and for streaming. If the only problem I can foresee with OBS is that it's not the best user friendly. No. It's not the best. No. You may have to look up some tutorials. Even I yell at it sometimes, mm. and I've been working with it for a long time. Um, that's the only. That's kind of the only hip, hiccup with OBS. It works fine when you know exactly how to use it. Yeah. OBS is open source software, so and uh, you'll yeah. notice a common thread among open source software. It's made by people who program, not by people who use the stuff. So right. it tends to be very counterintuitive. Um, or if you want to even, what? As a programmer, I will say it is very intuitive to programmers, the programmers who wrote it. It makes perfect sense to them that you normal people can't handle it. <laughs> oh, you want an even better example. Open up VLC sometime and try to just simply navigate to anything in a VLC menu. <laughs> okay, I'll take that one. Um, all right, let's see what else is here. Uh, Jesse has a question. I have some old FMV games that need special versions of QuickTime. Other games need a newer one. Is there an easier way than giving each game its own virtual machine? Oh, that's a good one. And I, I already have the answer to that. Oh, Mike, for the win. Is it Prey? Uh, it's, it's no. You have to give them their own virtual machine. QuickTime, yeah. because it's Apple... Uh, always will go with the latest and greatest version that you have on your machine and you either won't install uh, other versions or will just ignore them. So you can't really have multiple on there at a time. So it, it's it's yeah, it, unlike unlike other programs where you go, well, I need this version for this and this version for this. It, they just go, no, no, you can't do it. Is there an easy way to clone a virtual machine? Um, well, OK, so my experience with virtual machines uh, when you're done building the virtual machine, you can save it off as a effectively a very large file. And there's nothing, since it's a very large file, stopping you from copying that file. So if you make five copies of that file and start up each one and go, this one gets this version of QuickTime, this one gets this version of QuickTime, this one gets this version of QuickTime, you're okay. Now, whether you need five ver licenses of Windows 98, I don't know the answer to. Um, it, well, it, it, that would seem like the best option there. What you do is get an installation started up until you get the basic Windows 98 installed and then stop, exit out, copy the virtual machine file, just duplicate it. And then you have two versions that are from installation, bare bones, blank, ready to go. And you can install each specific one. You can even rename the virtual machine file, whatever you want it to be, so you know which one is which. It's a convoluted way of doing things, but yeah, QuickTime is very... <sighs> it's Apple! Yeah, by the way, when you do this uh, copy of a virtual machine, uh, and you start up a, a second one, it will ask, because you, you'll put them probably, I would hope, in different directories, so you can just organize things properly. It will ask you, uh, if you've moved the virtual machine or copied it, and if you tell it you've moved it, it will say it, it will say, OK, I'm keeping all my previous settings. And if you say you've copied it, it may ask you for new setting, new configuration files. I kind of wish I knew uh, which FMB games they're talking about so I could kind of look into it a little bit more because not all 
FMV games necessarily need a, a virtual machine like that. Uh, some of them you can just run in DOSBox and they work fine. Uh, it's not the FMV that necessarily makes it difficult to run. I can run FMV games in, in DOSBox. Or if it's on GOG or something, then I could push people there. So I really w- I wish I knew what games they were talking about. Um... Um, if, if they're in the channel, who was this guy, Nash? Uh, this was... Jesse. Jesse? Yeah. Jesse. Jesse, are you in the chat? Just feel free to speak up. I don't see a Jesse on IRC, but they might be in Twitch. So weird having two chats for this, but. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um... If not, Jesse, when you see the video, contact us, let us know. Maybe we can get a further answer for you. Uh, all right, let's let's go on to another question while we can. Uh, this one is from Will. Uh, first off, big thanks to Roses for introducing me to Grim, Grim Fandango. Love that game. You're welcome. Uh, any, anyways, I recently put together a um, Windows 98 PC out of boredom, and so far has been working quite well for games released around 97 to 2004. However, most games made before 96 either don't run or don't run correctly namely games made with DOS in mind. Well, I'm sure messing with some settings would do the trick. I've decided to make an even older PC. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Send it around a Pentium 2 and Voodoo card for two reasons. One, I can never get DOS box or virtual machines to work correctly. Two, there's nothing else to work with on the Windows 98 PC, and now I'm bored again. And it can- okay, that's a good reason. In any case, I want your opinion on parts to get for a Pentium 2 machine with a Voodoo card. That would allow best compatibility with DOS and very early Windows games. Thanks in advance. Mm. I I am just like, I'm over here like kind of, I want to know <laughs> why, I want to know what's going on with DOSBox that it's not working for you for DOS games. Because that would be my number one answer. I don't think it's necessary to build an even older PC uh, when you can do DOSBox for free and have it work really well. So I would love to know if you're listening, what the main problem is with DOSBox, you know, is, a, is are you not mounting the ISOs correctly? Is, is it a mounting problem? What's the actual problem? Because uh, that would be my answer. I I feel like it's overkill to, to do an older PC. But if that's your jam, I'm not judging. Yeah, if, you if might want to do it. Yeah, if you want to do that, and you're totally passionate about it, I don't think it's necessary just listening to your questions. So I would love I would love to know why DOSBox is not working out for you. Uh, and if DOSBox is not working, maybe consider SCUM, a SCUM virtual machine. Super easy to run, and sometimes games run even better in SCUM VM. Here's another thing I'm, I'm trying to wonder here. He's trying to run DOS games um, on a Windows 98 machine. Right. <laughs> Why not just run DOS? Just, <laughs> you could do that. You could you could set up uh, either an auto ex, uh, 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 you could alter the, ba- the boot file to allow to boot to DOS, or you could just run DOS from a disk. Mm-hmm. That would be DOS. You, you wouldn't have to emulate anything. Yeah. You'd be running DOS. <laughs> Yeah, like I feel like there's multiple <laughs> options that you can do that won't involve uh, building another no, old I... PC game uh, PC unless you want to. Unless you're like, hey, I'm totally into this and I want to build another machine, but you don't have to. I, I do think there are other ex- <laughs> other options for you. <laughs> um, now, all right. Now, if you do just want to build the machine for your own edification, um, best parts to get for Pentium Two with a voodoo card. You see, this is, all right, if you're worried about compatibility in this time, this was a period where there weren't a lot of variants between things. If you had an official sound blast, that, that that's one thing I would go with. Make sure you're, whatever sound card you get, it's a name sound card. It's not a Sound Blaster 16 alike. It's a Sound Blaster 16 because then you're, totally assured compatibility on that stage um if the voodoo cards across the board they were all pretty much the same no one was really 
they they aren't like today with the overclocking and the different cooling and the, the, the variants and all that and the you know the improved uh volt capacity where you could overclock it no they were all pretty much about the same across the line um Mainly, I would be concerned. Yeah, my my primary concern here would um would be get make sure your sound because that's the one that throws everything off the most in in games is the sound blaster. Um, finding a sound blaster sixteen compatible shouldn't be too big of a problem. You may have eBay for it. Um, but that would be your first an authentic sound blast a sound blaster sixteen maybe a maybe a thirty two. Um, definitely a 16. Um, but, yeah, they're all over eBay from 20 to $40 looks yeah. like. So, um, but, um, even one factory sealed here for 15 factory seals. Snap that up before those start getting expensive because give it another five years. They will. It's a golden age right now, friends. Um, but as far as the video card, the motherboards, the there wasn't anything that was really super incompatible among the different. If we're talking Pentium Two, everything was pretty much a Pentium Two. Um, and with Voodoo, it one person's Voodoo card was the same as the next. Voodoo. Now, if you're concerned about 3D FX or a different kind of video card, you might have to get separate video cards depending on what type of game you're kind of playing because some of them were compatible with both, some of them compatible with one or the other, and it was a big headache to get the best video quality for all games. Um, so yeah, otherwise, honestly, just run DOS! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> it's, it's Windows 98! You know what's underneath Windows 98? DOS! Oh, <laughs> you know, the Voodoo 2 needed a 2D card. Yeah, but again, you're th there wasn't anything that was wildly incompatible back then about that sort of stuff. There was the VGA standard and the SVGA standard were pretty closely adhered to. That was the number one concern. The idea of the video acceleration and all the rest of it, very early days back then. Um... Let's see what else. We, yeah, we got a little bit more time left. Let's see what we have here. Um, uh, all right. Well, we someone sent us one of our regular questions, but we'll go ahead and answer that anyway. Uh, Ava writes, hey, Nash and Mike, some years back, a guy told me that I needed to reset the battery of my laptop by letting it run out of charge entirely and then charge it all the way back up again. And that doing this every month would help the battery stay alive longer. I didn't listen to him, because it's also the guy who told me not to run any antivirus software, because it eats CPU cycles. Oh. This was back in the day before malware got huge. I'm pretty sure his advice would be the same today. I have no idea if he was right about the batteries. Is he? Is there some kind of weird maintenance process that prolongs the life of lithium-ion batteries that makes them hold the charge longer? Whatever he was telling me was just bullshit that would kill my battery sooner. Thanks, Ava. Um, I, this well. is a great question. I would love to know if there's some kind of urban myth or I, I always let my batteries drain, but not because of any particular reason. I was super lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'd love to know. Mike. There are battery types that have effectively a memory. And so when they discharge partially, they remember that location and will only charge back up partially or only discharge to that level again. Uh, I want, is that nickel metal hydride, Nash? NICADs, yeah, I think I think that's NICADs. Um, but lithium ion, I don't believe has that problem. No, lithium ion is much newer. Um, there are some instances where you have to do weird things with them, but generally the main consideration with lithium ion batteries is they do wear down. They have a certain number of cycles over time that they'll be able to charge. And over time, it starts getting gradually less and less they're able to hold as the material gets worn out until eventually they can't hold the charge anymore. 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm running into that at work. The problem of, of letting it go all the way down and then charging it all the way back up is that's, I don't, I'm not entirely sure if that's wearing it down faster or not, but it's I, not. I don't know. It's certainly not going to increase the longevity because with lithium ion, it's the longevity is kind of just a thing. You can't really change it. You can't improve it. You can just use a battery for as long as it works. And eventually, especially if it's in a laptop, you use it a lot every day. You're probably going to get two, maybe three years out of it before you start noticing it doesn't hold charge for much longer than maybe an hour, if that. And that's the time to replace it. That's just the limitation of lithium ion. So I did just find a physics article. <laughs> Memory effects are well known to users of uh, NICAD and nickel metal hydride batteries, but they do not occur in lithium ion. So, yes, the old style batteries that happen in the new lithium ions doesn't. Ava, stop listening to this person. They are a stupid, <laughs> stupid person. I, I saw someone on Facebook, like within the last month, say, no, you don't need to run antivirus at all, not even the Windows Defender. And I'm like, I I'm not going to jump in that. That is a stupid man. You're stupid. Don't do that. Don't don't listen to the stupid man. It's dangerous. Um, all right, let's see. Oh, got that on the screen. Let's see. Do we have any new ones have come in? Let me find out. Nothing just yet. I guess we could we could we've got about another five minutes or so. Um, I'm gonna take like questions from the chat from the live chat yeah let's see anyone yeah. have anything pressing you're concerned about in terms of retro gaming um i did i did want to mention another option i think are you still using it i got you a raspberry pi like a few years ago um actually chris uses it pretty oh. often yeah yeah that's actually a good option um the raspberry pi has a uh in a distribution of linux called retro pi um, no, the Ra Raspberry Pi is already a very cheap $35 computer. It's not a huge deal. You purchase that, get the free distribution of RetroPie, and you can run so many different types of games are emulated on that one, uh, very cheaply and pretty efficiently. Uh, you don't need any strange adapters because it already has an HDMI connection on it. Uh, plus, the RetroPie installation of Linux has all your basic browser and, and other functions you'd need for that sort of stuff. Um, Someone says they have a game question, but it's a game in the 2000s, and they say they doubt it's retro. Uh, I mean, it's, what, do, what do we actually consider retro? The 2000s was almost 20 years ago, so... Well, it could be as few as 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, Jesse's topped on. He said the games he was he was having problems with with the uh, QuickTime, the Blackstone Chronicles. He thinks. Oh crud! I've never heard of those. Ah. Uh, I'm gonna look it up real quick here, though. So am I. Uh, the Sapphire Cat is a quick one. Uh, don't have a gaming question, but I'm a graphic design student looking to upgrade my computer to a new one. Like some advice on what to look for if it's at all possible. Uh, yes, some basic stuff on that one. Uh, you're going to want, if you go with an Intel PC, you're going to want at least an i5, preferably an i7. That's for your CPU. Um, you're going to want at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. For graphic design, you might want to go all the way up to 32, but don't worry, that's something you can normally upgrade later. Um... Or even 64, but 64 might well be overkill. Might be overkill. Um, an SSD is is pretty good for launching stuff quickly. Not something you're going to have to be concerned about for your data storage. So it's good to have an SSD boot drive and a regular hard drive for um, storing your files on. Um, graphics card, anything in the middle of the road these days. Uh, a GTX 1050 will get you by just fine because you're doing graphics design. If it was video editing, I'd have a different answer. Um, also, AMD's processors are a pretty good alternative to Intel right now. You can yeah. get their um, Ryzen 7 series at about the same price you would pay for uh, an i5. Uh, it's got a little bit more horsepower, and it does stuff like video rendering and streaming a little bit better, so that might be in your wheelhouse. Yeah. And the second generation of the Ryzen processors just came out. 
So the first generation are even a little bit cheaper right now. If, yeah. You know, money is not uh, an issue. Uh, Warthog Demon. All right, this is going to be our last one tonight because we're running up on time here. Warthog Demon. Okay, my question is, I want to play Age of Mythology on a Windows 10 desktop computer. I can install it. When I try to open it, nothing happens. Research tells me something called Safe Disk is preventing me from doing this. Any way around this without compromising my computer's safety? Yes, it's on Steam. Go buy it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my answer for you. <laughs> That's what I was about to say as well. I was like, Age of Mythology. Oh, look, Steam. Yeah, and it's the I have extended that edition. Game. Yeah. And that... it's great. I, I have it. Runs fine. Just trying to save you some time, my friend. Safe disk and quite a, a few other copy protection me measures from earlier days end up being a bane for retro gaming because new computers have no idea what to do with the damn thing and the they, they don't recognize the program they they or the program doesn't recognize the, the hardware and says yeah i'm not i don't know what this is i'm not going to run because it 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 could be someone trying to copy yeah so yeah in that instance with one of those things that, that's going to be a hurdle old copy protection unless we're talking really old copy protection then you just need the booklet or the disc i love the ones with the disc yes yeah. line up the th okay it's capricorn yeah Me. um but yeah some older copy protection that was built into the games back then just doesn't know what to do now it's old and it's crotchety and it's angry yeah I've run into software. I've run into, ran into a piece of software years ago that literally only ran on Windows 98. You couldn't emulate it. You couldn't do anything with it. It would say, no, this isn't Windows 98. I'm not installing. Yeah. Virtual machine. I have, a, I have a game like that now that I just played on my 98 machine. Uh, it was uh, the Black Dahlia, which I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. It's an, it's an FMV game. Uh, I'm, I'm familiar historically with it. Uh, much more, but yeah. Also, I just want to make a note here. I looked up these Blackstone Chronicle games, and they look... Uh, this game looks awesome! Thanks for the suggestion, Jesse. I will try to get this running, and I'll get back to you. Yeah, <laughs> it's an adventure game. It looks great. Just if you can get it to behave through QuickTime. That's, good. that's, good. that's going to be a new adventure. All right. Well, that's that's going to just about wrap it up for us this week. Thank you, everyone, who sent in questions. Thank you, uh, yes. Pushing Up Roses, for joining us. I we we loved having you here. I hope you guys anytime at home enjoyed this. Um, Mike and I will be back next week uh, at nine p.m. next Saturday. If you have tech questions for us, you want to know how to fix and get something running, go ahead and send those to requests at radiodeadair.com. We'll try and get them on. Meanwhile, we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.